So, we've now got the base. Everything's fine. Now we can start applying that lovely potting mix we've just made up. Go gently to start with. You don't want to disturb what you've put in already, particularly the expanded clay. And we're starting to cover all that now. Don't put too much in because you need to work out just how deep the tree you're putting in is. And in this case we're going to put in a beautiful pomegranate tree and it's quite large. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is grab that and here it comes. Now look at that, it's above the level of the, the pot already but when we take it out we will be able to flatten some of those roots out and get that down in there. Let's see how we go. Now this is obviously not the pomegranate. Um, I'm doing this, I'm sacrificing this tree for expediency and practicality. Uh, this is one of the dwarf pears. I mean, we're now in February, we're um, mid-late summer. This should have been planted last August. Uh, but I just wanted to go through a couple of quick little things about planting trees. I mean, ideally, deciduous trees you plant uh, during dormancy, just before the spring break. But you're often told uh, when you plant things out of pots not to disturb the roots. That's wrong. Okay, that is simply wrong. That rule comes from the old days uh, when we didn't have decent irrigation. But I can assure you, you must expose all the roots uh, when you plant, whether it's planting into a pot, into the garden, or out in the orchard. So we take the, the plant out of the pot. Also, by the way, I always um, prefer trees that grown in square pots rather than round pots. It costs the nursery a little bit more but you get a much better root system. You don't get as much of that root coiling. So you can see this is already a bit pot bound, but there's a couple of reasons you take all the potting mix off. And you can see this should have been planted six months ago. But what we're looking for, any problems with the thicker roots, uh, Anything that's doing less than a 90 degree bend, you need to prune off because as that root fattens, it's going to choke itself. Obviously things doing U-turns, but I'm just having a close look here and, and they're fine. Okay, there's no problems. A second thing, advantage of doing this, you can now have a quick look through the potting mix. A couple of times now um, I've bought potted fruit trees from nurseries, uh, one retail, one wholesale, and I've done this and there's been awful insect problems. One of them I pulled out 28 African black beetle pupae. Okay, so they were pupae that had come from the grub stage that were damaging the, the root system and they all emerge as an adult only to lay other eggs. You also um, occasionally look at things like ground pearl, uh, any of the other sawborn uh, weevils or beetles. If you see fungus gnats that look like a little white fly, that's not a problem, that's because it's been too warm and moist uh, and that won't happen in these pots. So there you go, check the root system first, if you see any problem with it, ditch it, but I'd suggest you take it back to the nursery and say, hey, this isn't good enough. So, let's get this beautiful Azerbaijan pomegranate in the pot. So I've had a really good look at the root system on this, it's pretty good. There's, you can see there's a larger root here um, doing a bit of a twist. But this is where you get the problem, though that's going to be fairly low in the potting mix. You can see that's doing a U-turn and it could end up choking. So I'd be inclined just to snip that one out there. But apart from that, I didn't spot um, any major problems with this. So we can tease a lot of these out. And it's a fairly big tree. So... You can see now that it's sitting 
well down under the potting mix and all we need to do now is continually fill it up. Alright so as we're filling it up uh, we're teasing these roots out layer by layer and we'll just keep going until we reach the top which should be a hundred millimetres below the level. So there we have it, it's in the pot just under a hundred mil from the edge of the top of the pot. You will get a bit of sinkage, slumpage as the trade calls it. Um, so with about 60 mil of mulch, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, that will sink down so the mulch level is just below the lip. So it's going to look nice and neat and not spill all over the place. So there we are. It's in the ground, so to speak. So here we have the finished item. Now a couple of things before we finish off. This was a, quite an advanced tree. You can see it's quite tall. We've upset all the root ball. It's quite badly um, anchored in at the moment. So we do need to stake it. Single stakes are never ever good. They're okay in a, in a nursery pot. But once you get them in the garden, never use a single stake. As trees move around in the wind, their roots detect where those pressures have come from and will grow anchor roots to withstand that movement. If you have a single stake and have it solid there, they don't know. And also the, you'll then get the top snapping. So staking any tree, whether in a pot or out in the garden, you have two stakes. Here I've used proper uh, tree um, uh, training. It's like spaghetti tube. You could use irrigation spaghetti tube stocking or anything like that. The trick is if you've got prevailing winds, and here our prevailing winds are from the southeast, you have the stakes opposed to the prevailing winds so the tree can rock. If you have the stakes pointing into the prevailing wind, the tree will rock and rub into the stake. Okay? So they should only be there for one season. The other thing is we've exposed all the roots and it's dried out. This was actually sprayed with an anti-transparent first. But now we've got it in, we're going to do a bit of pruning and to really take the stress away and look at those two gorgeous pomegranates there we're actually going to take the very growing tips out of these main stems take it out about there and just snip the other tips off because that's where you've got apical dominance, that's where this tree is trying to push all its sap and therefore all its water. You can even tip some of these as well. Um, that will actually reduce. But also while we're here we'll do a little bit of formative pruning. Whatever the tree is, crossover branches are no good. We've got one in there growing through there. They'll eventually get big and rub. So we've got to take that out. Better sooner than later. So we start trying to get a bit of framework into this tree. We can also take this one out. Um, this is actually going to be fanned out against a wall. So we're going to have, uh, don't use the word espalier, it's going to be a trellis, it's going to be a fan, it's going to be on a two-dimensional plane rather than a three-dimensional plane. So we've just reduced uh, a lot of the moisture loss for the first 10 to 14 days this tree is in the ground. Now talking about water, obviously the next super important job that you must do straight away is water this tree in. So we're going to water that well in. This is actually going to take a, a few minutes. You really need to totally saturate this potting mix. Absolutely saturate it until it's running out of the drain holes. That expels all the air. It re-wets all those dry roots. And will really help this tree get going. Okay, so we've watered it in until it starts to run out of the drain holes and that indicates that it's now thoroughly saturated. Okay, so that tree's ready to go. Now, the last but probably the most important job is mulching. We're all becoming aware just how super important mulching is. It helps buffer soil temperatures. It returns organics to the soil and potting mix is a soil. Okay, it's a growing medium. We want microbes in there to convert this decaying organic matter into nutrients. So with your prunings, whether in a pot or out in the garden, 
either chip or just cut up your prunings and chuck them down and because that is choco full of nutrients that that plant needs it will break down and just return it to the mix but now we're going to top it up um, with pots I prefer crushed pine bark as long as it's the screened stuff you don't want too many fines you know apart from mulch being a temperature blanket returning organics to the mix the critical thing anywhere but more especially in pots is that we want mulch to conserve water now mulches are not all the same. Trials have shown that mulches that are full of fine materials like breaking down lucerne straw, uh, the really fine mulches that are on the market still unfortunately, um, you know the really puffy, the so-called composted mulches, they've got too many fines in them and we lose water, they act as wicks and some of the mulches on the market actually cause more moisture loss out of the soil than if you didn't have mulch there at all. How bad is that? So we need something coarse and irregular that water will go through into the potting mix where we want it but it will stop surface evaporation. It will cap off that capillary rise, that, that normal moisture movement that you get. So I find pine bark nice and clean and convenient. It's a bit pricey um, but it works extremely well and looks neat. So we're going to top this up right to the rim of the pot. And there we go. Go to the top, just take a little bit away from here. You often hear you shouldn't have mulch within 100 mil or so of the base of a tree because of colorot. Um, that's wrong. You only get colorot where the bark remains moist. Now remember, a water-wise mulch is one that doesn't trap water. It lets the water through into the mix. You can tell whether your mulch is working by going out 20 minutes after a rain or an irrigation and just finger through the mulch and if it's wet it's not a water wise mulch because it's holding water but if it's fairly dry it means the water's gone through so if it's fairly dry you won't get cholera that's just a myth a fallacy and there we have it a good water wise mulch like this or your own shredded garden prunings council prunings prunings from tree loppers wherever you can get it it is beautiful stuff and it will reduce your water need by a minimum of one third over bare soil. How good is that? So another reason why once established these trees will perform acceptably well on one watering a week though I tend to stick with two. And that's it. Now we're going to enjoy a pomegranate or two hopefully. A couple of things I forgot to mention earlier when talking about uh, buying good wine barrels if you buy them from a good reseller where I do where they've been kept moist the joints are nice and tight there's very little weepage uh, through there um, you can see that you know there's still a bit of water coming through it takes a minimum of 20 litres of water to wet this mix up if not 30 so better, the, your first watering you're better off putting more than less in so that was about 30 litres and then it really started to rush out the bottom. But that is nicely wetted up, the clay, the bentonite clay, the zeolite, but also the organic matter will cling on to it, a lot of that moisture and you'll be surprised even in a couple of days there will still be enough residual moisture in this tree, even in stinking hot weather.